Hey. What's going on? All right. So yeah, I guess we'll start until people start cycling through. But uh, no, what yeah. Damien was saying about the uh, fact that they, for some reason, the government will not expressly uh, call the KKK a um, terrorist, a terrorist group is very interesting. I mean, certainly the Southern Poverty Law Center has. But I think the government's actually come out and just admitted that when they think of terrorists, they're talking about foreign groups, which is yeah, odd yeah. because, um, you know, there have been groups that have obviously been like, uh, you know, the guy who bombed the um, the center, what's his name? Timothy, Timothy McVeigh. Yeah, Timothy McVeigh. There have been people who are obviously operating as even traditional There are the most dangerous terrorists that we'll, we'll face in the upcoming century. Yeah, um, they're fighting the, these right militia. Now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're not taken seriously. I mean, the government... They're considered, they're considered lone wolves, but they're not lone wolves. They're, they're part of a group. Yeah. And part of a support group. For certain. To be honest, it's probably because some people on right have connections with them. Um, uh, Bannon had definitely had open relationships with uh, with with uh, racial uh, provocateurs, provocateurs, provocateurs. Yeah. Um, uh, so he was he was definitely guilty, and that's exactly why uh, Trump had to let him go because he, he his obvious connections with with the uh, right wing um, uh, racialist groups. Yeah, and even then, he still doesn't want to outright, like, uh, you know, say no. how horrible they are. No, no, no. Uh -huh. They're they're just misunderstood from his perspective. Yeah, really, right? Really playing yeah, the game. Yeah, exactly. He is. He is. He's gaming the system for sure. I'm just gonna pause for a second while I grab a snack while we wait. Oh, I'm surprised. <clears throat> So I have this new uh, Y magazine, which I'm a big fan of the of the of the magazine. Uh, I like the Atlantic better, but this one was a uh, very affordable this year. Wait, so you said um, Wired, Wired, yeah. You're familiar, right, with Wired, the the high tech uh, culture magazine? I definitely heard of it. Yeah, it, and its current issue is this. Oh, I, hold on. There we go. It's called uh, the evolution of digital blackface. And okay. here, here's the side. Here's the here's the, the context. On TikTok, users drink the trappings of the black culture and steal the viral spotlight. I haven't it yet, but it's it's brand new off the, right right out right out of my mail my mailbox. That sounds pretty interesting. Sounds I, I'll interesting. tell you how how what I think of it after I'm done. Yeah, that's. Uh... That's very interesting. I'd like to know what folks think about that. Hmm. That that's on the subject of like cultural misappropriation, then, or yes, we... absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah, basically, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, which hmm. is kind of an interesting term that I've been hearing recently. I always heard it as cultural appropriation, but misappropriation oh. makes just as much sense. Yeah, I mean, at a certain point I, I've always wondered if there's a moment where culture kind of comes together and uh, creates a safe place to experimentally explore um, instead of how we've seen cultural diffusion kind of work out where typically great tragedies befall a culture and they get absorbed by another culture. Like how do we create a safe place um, to uh, positively bring culture uh, together. Um, that would be well, I, it, it, you have to be very, um, you have to be very steeped in the cult that you're, you're, you're supposedly representing. Um, for instance, no one, I don't think anybody could make the case that Eminem did not live the, that he lived uh, and, or that he was misappropriating, misappropriating black culture. He was um, living the true. What what do you think, Flav? I should say more and more or less. I I agree with you, but some people don't. Yes, I agree with you. So I think your argument is righteous, and I think especially people who actually know hip hop will agree with us. 
but I think there are people who aren't as steeped in the culture who just kind of react. Yes. Sometimes who, you know, may misconstrue it. But yeah, certainly, no. certainly the way that you set that up makes sense being steeped in the culture, being in and of the culture. You know, he was raised in it, put his dues in, and he actually had to fight his way up, right? The old fashioned way. Exactly. Literally the old fashioned way. No nobody does that anymore. Right. People just uh, people just um just uh, make it onto YouTube or another uh, social media platform, and then then they're in. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Katie? What's going hey. on, guys? So, guys, what I was reading before, uh, just a repeat in case uh, Katie didn't hear or or Damien didn't hear, is the evolution of digital blackface. On TikTok, users drape themselves in the trappings of black culture and steal the viral spotlight. Uh, so uh, this is from a magazine that I like called Wire. Um, and uh, uh, I haven't read it yet, unfortunately, because it just came in the mail today. Uh, so I, I usually save it for a few days, kind of uh, think about it before I even approach the subjects that they talk about. I mean, the first thing I think of is twerking, you know? Yeah, actually. Um, yeah, it's working. Okay. Are you familiar with that? Uh, I believe that is a booty shaking gesture, um, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. And it's, you know, it's like, it is what it is, right? It's, uh, you know, everyone twerks now. It is what it is. But at some point, you know, there is kind of this culture, vulture a thing where people don't really know what they're doing and they're just kind of, you know, I don't know, they, there seems to be some kind of making fun of the, of the culture and uh, I, mocking, I don't know, yeah. profiting, yeah, mocking, yeah, exactly, there's, there's that kind of thing. Which some people may not feel that way, but some people may feel like, you know, this is a universal- Mr. Society. Sam. Everyone does it. Hey, how's it going, Sam? Hey, good. How are you? Good, good. good. You, you look like you look like you're you're about to give your testimony. Like my dad used to take me to the circus, would cry at the peanuts being thrown at the odds or something like that. Why does why does he look like that? Because he's like laying down and relaxing. Oh, <laughs> he's talking about me. All right. <laughs> yes. Oh, because you have your bird on you. I do. Yes. And so what you you were saying that I looked like I was about to do what? It, it's it's just complicated, don't worry. It, it was just stupid. Okay. I just said you you look like you were about to um uh uh confessional with your with your psychologist or something. You oh, know, cuz sure. you're supposed to yeah. lie down traditionally and you get can. your Yeah, yep. Oh, see you. Okay. Totally. That makes more sense. You said give testimony. And I was gonna be like, that, what kind yeah, of, that's what I heard too. I was that's like, what, what kind of too. court is he going to? Like that is uh, definitely I didn't mean like that for the testimony, but yeah. I, I get it. I get it now. Well, this is definite this is de I definitely do court like this these days. So <laughs> um <yeah. laughs> it's much easier on the constitution, right? Is, is oh, that Lord. a mask your bird has on? A mask? No, she's got a collar. She's got a collar around her neck to pre to prevent her from picking at herself. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So we were oh, just talking is, about... Is that Katie? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, that's Katie. Katie, hey, hi, Katie. That is, I was going on, Sam. Hey. We were just talking about digital blackface. And um, that's what they, that's what the title is, right? Yeah, it's... it's digital blackface? The, the evolution of digital blackface is the, the, evolution. Is the article. And I, I, the first thing that I thought of was kind of twerking on TikTok. Um, we didn't really get much further... Uh, than that, but yeah, I know we 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 we've been uh, we've been getting members as we were going along, so we keep having to go back. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but uh, um, uh, basically, I, I I don't know, you know the uh, in a way, I I do believe that there is some cultural aspects that can be taken universally, 
But then in other ways, I believe that it's disrespectful to take everybody's culture and profit off of it if, it, if it's not your uh, bag, if it's not your truth, in other words. So, what are we and, talking about? Cultural appropriation? Uh, well, d Digital Blackface is the name of the title of the, is that the title of the magazine? The, That's the name of the article. The it's, article it's, it's the, it's, in the Wired the magazine. First, in the Wired magazine. So we're trying to figure out like what, he hasn't read the article yet. So we're kind of like putting our own take on what exactly that would mean. Hey, Emily. You know, cultural, so, so cultural appropriation, or I do like to say misappropriation in this case, but I think appropriation, I think you're right, Flav. I think it's actually cultural uh, appropriation. I think, I think people say both now, but. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just, it's such a difficult subject to start drawing lines knowing uh, that we want to um, bring cultures together. Like the idea of culture itself was to bring people together. And yeah. then when cultures found other cultures, like I was saying, the, the, you know, the worst way to do it is with cultural diffusion where a great tragedy befalls a culture and then one culture completely absorbs another. So mm -hmm. finding a safe way to kind of introduce culture to another or to have each culture kind of like play nice on the playground kind of feel, it's, that's difficult um, to say. There isn't really, there isn't really a lot of talk about that, to be honest. Um, you know, culture is a fluid idea, it's very free flowing. So, um, do you think? Do you think it's controversial when I say that, like, you know, uh, white girls uh, twerking on TikTok is like, uh, you know, cultural appropriation? Is that? Well, it's like why even. Uh, white girls, like we could say any other culture, like what about uh, girls from India or what about guys doing it? Is that inappropriate in that case? I mean, that's what I'm saying. That's, is not the line. That's an in interesting the question. I've only seen it like once or twice and it was like kind of seen as a joke. But okay. that is that is a good question. Um, you know, something that like when I look at this idea of uh, blackface in general, now that was like originally where even specifically with actors who would paint their faces black to play an African-American in a film. If I'm not mistaken, that's how that started or, or am I? Yeah, yeah. Al Jolson. Yeah. Al Jolson was the most okay. famous. And uh, right, and he uh, took negative say. stereotypes to embody with that too, specifically accentuating negative stereotypes. So like mm -hmm. that for sure is a misappropriation of culture. Um, yeah. Something that I found interesting a while back um, uh, is that there were some interviews with Native Americans who were being asked questions about appropriation of their culture. And they had some really interesting responses. Now it was a small sample size. I think there was only like five or six people that actually ended up speaking to the interviewer. And one guy specifically, I found his response interesting. He was asked if he found for Halloween when kids dress up as a chief and jump around patting their mouths and asking for candy, would you guys be offended by that? And the guy's response was no. In fact, he believes it to be comedic. He thinks it's very funny. But if they were to actually kill a sacred animal like an eagle or actually go through these acts of sacrament and make some kind of headdress or costume and then just dance around with it for Halloween, that would be very offensive, extremely offensive to him. He got very cold for a few minutes there. So really? Like, so you're saying without the killing of the animal, this person didn't find it offensive? This, yeah, this person found it comedic, bought from a store with fake stuff and fake items and just like, oh, look at these people like wishing they could be like us. But as soon as they get into the ritual of it, it's a problem. And I'll mention too something I learned specifically about eagle feathers in the culture is even in the so let's let's keep this let's keep this short and sweet so our yeah. other folks can hop in yeah, um, em, em, emily and sam what do you what do you think about this um well it's funny uh i i i well actually in a slightly tangential note well first of all i just want to mention something really that i find amusing i recently became infatuated um I've been watching a lot of Turner classic movies over the summer to kind of like pass the time while I was like uh, holed up. And sure. uh, just in a slightly side amusing note, I saw this movie called Saratoga Trunk, which I had never seen before. It came out in 1945. And 
at, right before the movie came on, they did like a little trailer for it. And it's, they said it starred Gary Cooper and Ingrid Bergman. And I love them both. I think they're both two of the greatest movie stars ever. So I was really surprised that I'd never heard of it before. Mm -hmm. so, the movie so the movie starts and about five minutes into it, I realize why people don't revive it very often because it's really bad. It's like campy and cheesy and stuff like that. It was enjoyable. However, I will also say that um, Oh, I think one, another reason why, uh, and a big reason probably why they don't revive it very often is because the female lead, played by Ingrid Bergman, uh, has, um, has a maid, and the maid is played by a white actress in blackface. And, oh, wow. Um, right, so keep in mind that this was six years after Gone with the Wind, and uh, if long after, like, it had, long after, you know, African-American actors and actresses had already like made headway into the movie industry. So right. the fact that that ha so it's, it was kind of a shock. It was a real shock to just watch that. So I've kind of just become like obsessed in like an amused way with this film because it's like so bad, like it's so bad, it's funny to me anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But um, as far as cultural appropriation goes, you know, somebody, Interestingly enough, in our group text on Facebook, someone made a comment who is not here in this discussion, so I don't want to name them, but made a comment that cultural appropriation is not, like accusing, accu accus throwing around the idea of cultural appropriation is a bad thing, is actually kind of a way of segregating cultures um, mm -hmm. and, because it limits communication with one another. And that originally it was far right racists in the 1950s who were angry that white people were playing rock and roll, which I thought, which was true. And I thought that was very interesting. Um, as far as the whole cultural appropriation goes, um, yeah, it is, there is, it is, it is loaded to an extent because there is a history in this country of white people, uh, co-opting, um, uh, you know, a, a other uh, you know, other people's cultures and profiting off of it. Um, and I think the only, the, I think that the only, the real insult there is not giving the people that they got it from a share of the profit. Like, and I okay. think that that's a, our history of that is what makes it such a, a loaded concept and something that should be evaluated. However, I don't think that uh, necessarily the act by itself should necessarily be viewed um, as a negative or an insult because I think it is a way of communicating with people. And I think it's a way of saying, hey, like, you know, like enjoying something that it's like, like, I enjoy this. I'm glad that you're here. Like, I pre like, I like, this is something that is, is new and foreign to me, but I really enjoy it. So I don't think that necessarily it has to be a bad thing when uh, one culture starts, uh, you know, starts um, enjoying and, and celebrating like, uh, or, or, you know, partaking in rituals from a different culture. I think it becomes, I think it becomes a problem when they decide to capitalize off of it and not share the, fr and not share the rewards of that with the people that they got it from. Okay, including like with the masks and stuff like that or? Masks? Yeah, he was talking about Halloween. It's become an issue with um, specifically. Oh yeah, like don't dress up like. Yeah, okay, I think that yeah. one. Not like, COVID oh, masks. COVID masks. I said not COVID masks. Oh, not COVID masks. No, we're talking about Halloween, right? Yeah. Okay. Listen, personally speaking, I don't. Get, I don't. I don't get the uh, like people getting offended over that, but. That's also, but however, that's also not my, but, it, but because, I, but I'm not offended over it, but it hasn't happened to me in that way. So if somebody is upset about it and they want to say why, I'll listen. But it's sure. just, I, I it, to me, like I, like it's a Halloween mask. Like it's right. a Halloween, it's a costume. You're wearing it for, you're wearing it like once a year. Like, right. uh, so that's just me. So I don't really get uh, in certain instances, why somebody might like why someone might be offended over that, but that's just me. Sure. And that's their and you know what I mean. Like, and again, uh, I will. I'll. I'll listen. Like, I'll. You know, I'll listen. I, I would never. I won't dismiss it outright. But I don't think that. I guess what I'm saying is, like, for me, like everyone has to pick and choose their own battles. So. Right. Um, yeah. 
One well, thing I will say on the topic of Halloween and dressing like something you're not, uh, women need a lot more options than the slutty whatever. Slutty uh, cop, slutty, slutty gangster, slutty this, mm-hmm. slutty that. Uh, I, I think it's. Don't women have a lot more options, here. though? Don't women? Can people? Can't they dress up? Like a lot of women dress up however they want, right? Right, but I mean, this is what's being put out in the stores for for the majority of people. Ah, I see. See, yes. it's not. It's not. It's not what they're doing. It's it's what it's what's, what's being, being marketed. What, what's what being marketed to them. to them? Okay. And and right. and Emily, I admire you for doing that because it, it, you know. Uh, the, the pressure must be intense to be, quote unquote, the slutty secretary, the this, the that. It's pretty awful, actually, when you think about it. I mean, I personally, I don't really feel that much. I don't really feel that much pressure, but I can't really speak for like all women because, like, I don't give a you know what what. Right, right. People think about yeah, most I, things. I feel like pressure is an odd way of putting it. I mean, unless maybe maybe unless you're like young or something, where it's like peer pressure but the majority of the country is young i don't think it's pressure like from like in marketing i don't think it's pressure from like the halloween store i think it's pressure from like you know people throwing parties like with like clubs that are open on halloween like right 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 which is like it's a it's pressure from party culture which is like kind of probably going to be a moot point this year okay I mean, the way I see it, like Halloween, like usually any Halloween party that I go to is my own because I, because I usually make it a combination Halloween and birthday party because my so birthday are you a Libra is to Halloween. Are you a Libra too? I'm a Scorpio. Oh, I, I, you almost a good person. And then suddenly you said Scorpio. Ah! So, oh, so, damn. So, Emily, what do you feel about, like, dressing up as, like, other cultures for, like, Halloween? Like, you know, dressing up, um, you know, in a kimono and, like, painting your face like a geisha or dressing up as, like, you know, the Native American generic costumes they have? Or... I mean, it's interesting because, like, normally that's not something that I would do. Like, I do think, it, I do feel like it's kind of my responsibility to, like, stay the hell away from doing that no matter what. But I remember how it was, all, how it, it was always weird in school, how it was, like, encouraged to, like, dress on, um, like, like, I remember sometime in middle school, like, where the social studies teachers made it a project to dress up as a historical character. Okay. And, hmm. and but in hindsight, like I almost feel weird about the fact that I dressed as Pocahontas. <laughs> like dressed up hindsight. as a Nobel Peace Prize winner. <laughs> well, th- that that's what my brother did. My brother dressed up as Albert Einstein. <laughs> oh, right, I did right, right. too. I did too. Yeah. But like, no, I think that like. But that kind of like raises the whole thing about like when I don't know about the rest of you guys, but when I was like little, little, like in elementary school and stuff, like they would have they would have us dress up as like choose to dress up as pilgrims or Indians, like on thanks like mm-hmm. on the day before Thanksgiving and stuff yeah. like that. And I can't now remember that if you did that. Seen as like offensive right. because it kind of is. Like, that reminds me of the uh, of the Adams Family movie where, yes. where uh, Wednesday re- leads a revolution in yes. the camp. <laughs> yes, right. Yes, the best yeah. scene in that, that was, movie. That was, yeah. Well, yes, it was. It was great. Yeah, it was. It was hilarious. But I think, like, also, like, what brings up a good. This is kind of a similar, but like, like related, like point, is something that I was thinking while y'all were talking was that I remember not too long ago actually getting and it's probably the kind of thing that like oddly enough I was arguing in favor of keeping my own mouth shut about it but 
I was arguing, I was like meta arguing, I guess, I don't know. But I got in a Twitter debate about whether Lin-Manuel Miranda was allowed to say the N-word or not. <laughs> I remember you talking about that, yeah. yeah. Well, and it's interesting because like, a lot of people, especially from like, from like this part of the country, I mean, my argument is that like, if Lin-Manuel feels it's okay for him to say it, it's okay for him to say it. But, because who am I as a white person to say he can't say it? But it's interesting because like in New York, there's very much of like a culture of like, like I've said before, like, let's, like Latinx people mm -hmm. are also, for lack of a better term, a lot seem to be allowed to say it in New York. Yeah, the like, Latinx Black uh, relations and just the whole cultural um, significance is uh, very different than on the West Coast. But then I actually, that's what I was going to say, I actually got into like a Twitter debate, an unintentional Twitter debate with someone with somebody complaining about Lin-Manuel Miranda thinking that he was allowed to say it because I had pointed out that like culturally he probably doesn't think that there's anything wrong with it. culturally right. he's from here he probably doesn't think there's anything wrong with it like yeah I've, like but and that's what I said and some people took offense to it and were like well New York isn't everywhere and yes, for those of you who watching at home who are not familiar with New Yorkers, we have opinions about everything. So, uh, but the point is, is that like what they were saying is like you know that so what they were saying was that why does New York get to decide who is allowed to say the N word? And I was like, ah, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that in New York, where Lin Manuel Miranda grew up. Yeah. He's culturally, a, you can't think that he's being racist towards you because he's culturally accustomed to saying it. And who am I to tell him not to? I don't have the right, who am I to tell, you can be offended, but who am I to, that, you can be offended, but like most New Yorkers are going to think you're a crazy person if you try to cancel Lin-Manuel for that, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, it's a difference. It's, there's a difference. I mean, I think that that statement about New York is interesting. I mean, because uh, beyond having opinions on everything, I think there is this sense that New York is like... Thinks we're better than anyone else? Uh, no, that it just represents everything, right? Because it's like, it's so culturally diverse and it's so, um, mm -hmm. it's so densely populated and largely populated. And even like when we joke about what's considered downstate or upstate, it's a very New York City centric idea that uh, everything else is upstate once you're outside of the city. So there is there is some of that. Well, that's very true because like when I was growing up as a kid, I always thought Poughkeepsie. I was considered Poughkeepsie downstate. Like I considered anything below Albany downstate, whereas like people here consider Westchester upstate. Yeah, I mean, not to get into that conversation again, but it's just, um, it just kind of shows that New York City is kind of like the center of the universe for folks. Um, that being said, it's like, hey, if people on the West Coast feel differently than we do on the East Coast, that's their thing, too. That's their prerogative. Yeah, right. Like, I'm not going to tell uh, a Black person from L.A. how to feel about you know Mexicans using the n-word over there because I don't live over there. Well exactly right. like they're allowed to have their own opinion and it's not that like it's not that I believe it's or that I was saying that they shouldn't have that they shouldn't feel some type of way about it but right. it was more that I was saying that they need to understand that people just like we need to understand that they might feel some type of way about it. They need to understand that New Yorkers aren't gonna feel a type of way about it. You know what I mean? 
here and New York was here first. <laughs> we were first. That's just kidding. True. Just kidding. Westward <laughs> expansion, <laughs> not eastward expansion. <laughs> um, you know, it's a, it's a, I really again appreciate this uh, topic matter because it is something people don't really get to talk into too much, but um, you know, as I, I was going into a bit there, like a lot of this comes down to like, we can't just engage with culture at a strictly aesthetic level. And I think that a part of this is like, when we're talking about a safe way to kind of diffuse culture, we need to create a way to like learn about culture and like how we're doing on this podcast where we're talking about these cultural aspects, we're creating a safe space where we can talk about it, you know, without letting, having it turn into an argument or a debate or offending somebody with some landmine or break any eggshells along the way. Sure. Um, and, you know, talking about things that we can talk about from our, our experiences. Um, I actually, I found something funny too uh, uh, amidst these things um, that I was uh, reflecting on some runway model fashion design stuff, uh, which mm -hmm. speaks a lot about culture because they try to bring it over um, in different ways to help with fashion um, you know, inspiration, I guess we could say. And mm -hmm. something was noticed about hairstyles and that hairstyles get um, a lot of representation for, you know, the style of hair you have. So something that was noted as a conflict was the use of cornrows. And this was designed and specifically with African culture with the African style of hair. But the person that brought this up as a problem, like, you know, hey, listen, I have an issue with the cornrows is not that you're using cornrows as your hairstyle for these fashion models, but that it's not reflected in any of the cultural representations of the models you chose. All of your models are all white or Polish or French. None of them are from Africa, yet you're using these African hairstyles for each of your models. And that was like a moment of cultural misappropriation, I would say, where like they're not actually bringing culture into the environment uh, to where they, they're kind of capitalizing on these things and not really paying homage or contributing back to the culture that you know they're absorbing for that matter. So let me ask folks a question. So like we mentioned um, Azalea, not Banks, but the other Iggy Azalea before. Iggy. Okay. She's been very heavily criticized and you know T.I. who's a black man put her out and you know had some things later to say, at, at what point, like, at what point does one cross the line from being a white person who happens to be a good rapper, which happens to be a mainly black uh, art form, to someone who is seen as a pro like misappropriating the culture? Like, for instance, like she's been accused. Yeah, like she's been accused of using a black scent. Or um, oh yeah, or or like some, you know, some like I talked about like twerking before, and I know it's considered more universal now, but yeah. like some of these like dances and like some of these things are just considered like black culture, and it's like at what point um, are people either like not doing it right or making a mockery yeah. of it, or just kind of like. Uh, making money off yeah. of something that's that they're not actually steeped in. Nicki Minaj actually said something about twerking specifically. Oh yeah, what? yeah, great, great quote. She says, "Come on, you can't want the good without the bad. If you want to enjoy our culture and our lifestyle, bond with us, dance with us, have fun with us, twerk with us, rap with us. Then you should also want to know what affects us, what's bothering us, what we feel is unfair to us. You should." shouldn't not want to know that. And okay. I think that's an interesting moment where she's saying like, you know, listen, the aesthetics are great, but like you got to engage with more than just the aesthetics, like where it came from. Yeah, yeah more, more than just superficial. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, some no blues musicians have mentioned this before too. Like where does the blues come from? Where does, where does jazz really come from? And there's a soul to the music to, mm -hmm. to yep. truly understand that. Uh, in yep. the well, yeah, I no think doubt. like, I seem I seem to recall like that 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 the conversation about Iggy Azalea happened to come up because because KD was complimenting my rapping skills. 
and and I was saying how it's like yeah like I'm like I can I'm like I'm good at it if someone else writes the words for me <laughs> but like mm -hmm. does that mean that like I really would ever want to do anything with it outside of my circle of friends like I don't think I would I don't think I would feel comfortable like you know dropping a rhyme in an open mic night or something and it's because I don't want to feel like I'm like encroaching on territory you know what I mean well like, yeah um so before before uh you folks got on I uh, Raul had briefly mentioned Eminem and we agreed that like Eminem is a person who was steeped in the culture fought his way through battling and and finally got on in spite of a lot of people being suspicious of him and mm -hmm. like he's steeped in the culture he's a hip-hop head he listens to hip-hop he eats breathes and shits it this yep. is a person down with the culture was surrounded you know by people also who grew up in the culture was surrounded by people who organically grew this like homegrown hip-hop culture in detroit so he's steeped in it right whereas i guess you might feel if someone were just coming up to you, writing rhymes for you, it might be different than someone who was like really, you know, steeped in this culture and living it. And I mean, it's a little kind of bit thing. of that, but like, it's a little bit of that. But that's, I don't know, I, that's not really it. Because like, I, on one hand, like, and I feel so, I really feel bad saying this because I don't think that because I can't think of a better way to say it <laughs> so I apologize in advance <laughs> but uh -oh. but like growing but like growing up as a kid and like as a teenager mm -hmm. the majority of my friends were black and Latino okay. and I kind of like and I kind of flew with what they were into sure. okay. and whatnot and I mean that just like that's just how it was that was just like a coincidence more than anything else mm -hmm. that right. like you know half the time I was like the white kid at like the like the one white kid at the, at the table okay. but like like the whole concept of like, well, why are the, all the black kids sitting together in the cafeteria was just always weird to me because I was like, but, the, but that's my table. But like, yeah. so get, getting into the comfort level feel, of being in, in a, a hip hop is like, what is that? Where does that come in? I feel like it's like, I, it's like, I feel comfortable in the culture because I've always flown with it and I've always like, in the groups that I've been in been seen as like I guess maybe like a trustworthy white person I don't know but like so so that's where like I could kind of like see it being okay but where like I feel where I feel weird about it is the fact that you know somebody like Eminem still had a tough life like I feel like I'm like there's no other way to put it like that than that I feel weird about it because I have privilege. You okay. know what I mean? Um, that's actually interesting because we never got a chance to talk about this last time. And I know that there is this assumption. And well, uh, I think me and Sam kind of got into it a bit last time. But there is this assumption that in order to be a rapper, you had to have had a hard life. And, and maybe for a lot of rappers, that was the case. And maybe Kanye kind of changed that a little bit with uh, admitting to have like more of a middle class background. And of course, Drake mm -hmm. certainly had a middle to upper, uh, you know, maybe even upper uh, class background. But um, I mean, is that to say that that's inherently a hip hop trait that you can't be an MC or a rapper without having grown up um, uh, poor or it, tough? Well, or um, I think, well, I, truth, uh, well, you know, interesting. I, I think probably the first people to really do that and come in on that front were probably the Beastie Boys. Um, and, you know, as beloved as they are now, 
And even though it didn't take them that long to get there, mm -hmm. when they showed up, they did a lot. There were a lot of eyebrows were raised. Okay. Yeah, um, but the the history of the BC Boys was when they were a punk band who moved into they were. Harlem. Yep. They they were a Harlem. They moved into Harlem together, the three of them, and steeped themselves in the culture, yeah. which is to me uh, the the way you do it. And, and as, as a poet, I oftentimes I'll drop bars on an open mic uh, jam with other musicians doing it. And I'll sometimes end saying, right after Super Hot Fire, paying homage to him there a little bit, something like, I'm not a rapper. And it's funny, it brings comedic attention to the play there, but it also takes the heat off of needing to put me in a genre. Because as mm. a poet, I could play through many different genres that just happened to have gone well with what was being played. Yeah. I mean, that's true. Like, here's the thing about it is that, like, in some sense, I feel like, you know, you're saying, like, Kanye changed, like, the narrative that you had to, that people with privilege couldn't rap. Like, Eminem, like, kind of changed the narrative that, like, oh, oh, your time's about to run out. Oh, okay. Do you, do you want to um, put up the next one? Um, yeah, I can. Oh. I'm trying. I'm trying to be fast enough to put to put it in the chat here. Um, um, well, why, did, why don't you just put it in the yeah. main thing? It just makes it easier if everyone can just also, access it from the. A final uh, consideration too. Um, Levi Strauss or Levi Jeans. That was from uh, Bavaria, you know. And talk about a cultural identification where America gets known for blue jeans, but really it was a Bavarian individual who invented that. Mm -hmm. kind of an interesting thing when we talk about cultural diffusion and a safe place to share culture and how we all kind of really got to absorb each other and make space for each other to share culture. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's like, I mean, listen, things come from places, but it's like, who made it hot? Yeah. You know? Like French, French fries. Maybe yeah. the French came up with it, but America, it, we made it hot. We miss, yep. we, we Freedom fries. Don't get, it, don't get it twisted. Don't get yeah. it twisted. Freedom fries. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Did you answer your question, Flavius? Yes. I think what happened was. Hang one on, of the I big... think you're going to get cut off, probably, Kate.